that feeling. Okay, so we talked yesterday about um, solving equations. Well, yesterday, you know what I mean. Um, so far, we're really just using addition, multiplication, subtraction, and division. And we're talking about solving equations with one variable. So something like this. But what if the one variable shows up in multiple faces? If I put an x here, 2x minus 7 equals 4x, there's still just one variable, there's still just x, but it's showing up, mm -hmm. as you see, in multiple faces. So we can, in a situation like this, we can combine variables. And if you want to think about it formally, combining variables is an application of the distributive property used in reverse. So ax plus bx equals a plus b times x, ax minus bx is a minus b times x. So let's take this 2x minus 7 equals 4x. And before we do anything else, let's try to get our x's together. And we have options here. I mean, usually solving equations is pretty mechanical because we're just following PEMDIS backwards. But your options here are, well, you can bring this 4x over to the left or you can bring that 2x over to the right. What I mean by that is if you have 2x minus 7 equals 4x, you could subtract 2x from both sides. and that minus seven equals two x. Alternatively, if you have two x minus seven equals four x, you could subtract four x from both sides and get negative two x minus seven equals zero. And these are both equations with one variable, and they can therefore both be solved. And I mean, sometimes one of these methods might be better in the sense that it involves fewer steps. If you look at what we have over here on the right, what do we need to do to solve this equation? Divide by two. One step and we are done. Over here, what should our next step be? Add seven. Add seven. So you've got to first do some addition. Let me try that again. You've got to first do some addition and then you can do your division.
division. And these answers are written a little differently, but these are both the same number, whether the um, negative side is in the top or the bottom doesn't matter. So probably this, what we did on the right was easier, but ultimately um, we ended up in the same place. Now, one thing we should probably be aware of, one sort of wriggle in this, If your variable goes up, a very formal phrase, if your variable shows up multiple times, there might not B, a solution. So just picking an example from out of the textbook, five times X minus three equals four times X minus three. At least I don't think this. No, this does have a solution. I was wrong. Never mind. We'll fight through it and we'll see what happens. So we want to um, combine our variables here. But the problem is that our variable is stuck in parentheses on both the left and the right hand side of that equality. So that's not a fatal problem though. What can we do to get our variables out of the parentheses? Distribute. Thank you very much. Um, 5x minus 15 equals 4x minus 12. And now, once again, we have options. Um, our goal is x equals something. So we want x on one side of the equality and numbers on the other side of the equality. At the moment, everything's mixed up. Our x's and our numbers are on both the left and the right hand side. So again, we have options, and our options are subtract 5x from both sides, or Subtract 4x from both sides. And we're going to wind up in the same place. I do, I mean, I do observe that if we subtract 5x, we get a negative x, whereas if we subtract 4x, we get a positive x. And I normally try to keep my x's positive if. I can help it. So all that remains now is to get x by itself on the left. We're undoing the order of operations, but you know, we don't have a bunch of operations. It's hopefully pretty straightforward. We add 15 to both sides. X 
equals three. Yeah. So there's our answer. And I mean, I, because I was thoughtless, I did not end up demonstrating what I was trying to demonstrate. Um, I guess a, line a linear equation should always have solutions. Mx plus b equals nx plus c or q or whatever another letter is. That should usually have solutions. I mean, but the, 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 the example where there wouldn't be solutions is going to look kind of goofy when I actually write it down. But if you have something like 5x plus 4 equals 5x plus 7, well, we can subtract 5x from both sides. And if there does happen to be a, an equation without solutions. This is what happens when you try to solve it. You get left with a nonsense statement that cannot be true. And this is really the only way, I mean, once we start squaring stuff and introducing square roots, it becomes a lot easier to not have solutions. But if we're just sort of looking at addition, multiplication, subtraction, and division, this example here, where this number and this number are the same, is the only situation where that can happen. Let's talk about word problems. The eternal bane of, of students everywhere, it feels like. But the word problems, at least that we want to look at at this level, are not super complicated. Students struggle with them. And when I say students, I mean college algebra students, but also I assume um, the younger students you will be working with. I mean, students struggle with them because they try to go too fast and refuse to write stuff down, is I think um, what it amounts to. So, you are driving home. Your distance in miles from your home is given by D equals one hundred twenty seven minus sixty five X. No, in fact, that's not even use X. Let's use sixty five T. where t is the number of hours you have driven. So we're trying to be nice here and use variables that represent what they're supposed to I mean, use variables D for distance, T for time, variables that hopefully make sense. And this is an equation of two variables, but it will become an equation of one variable when you ask a question like, um, 
and stop hitting that eraser button. When will you reach your home? How many hours will it take you to drive home? So, what are we doing here? Well, we have two variables. D is our distance, T is our time. And we're trying to solve for time. We're trying to get T equals something as our solution. So we have to make a slight leap here. B is our distance from home. So when we reach our home, what's D going to be? Three miles. How many miles? That the equation of 127 minus your 65t. I mean, that's, that's the, um, that is the equation that gives distance. But let's try to, let's try not to overcomplicate this. Okay, never mind home for a minute. Just me and the coil building. I'm standing in the coil building. So am I five miles from the coil building? or four miles, or one mile, or a half a mile? Or would it make more sense to say that I am zero miles away from the coil building when I'm standing in it? So this is kind of the leap we have to make. And it's leaps like this that make word problems potentially be tricky. I know that I said they weren't, but I was really talking about actually solving the math when I said that. So when I'm at home, I am zero miles from home. And once we are able to make that leap, we get an equation that we can solve. Zero is one, two, seven, minus 65. So we've got a- Why did we assume we're at home when it says we're driving? Um, because we're driving home, but we're eventually going to reach our home. And the question we're asked is, when we stop driving, when we're at our home, how long will that take? What's the T value? So, I mean, another way, I guess, of saying this, let's see. When will you reach home? Maybe it would be easier to say, I don't know, at the end of the drive, how many hours well, this is kind of an awkward phrasing in of itself, but at the end of the drive, how many hours did you drive? I mean, we're thinking of reaching home as part of the driving process. We get in the car, we drive, we get out of the car. 
and her thinking of the beginning and the end as being part of the drive, as I guess, I guess the way I'd answer that question. I don't know if it was super clear, but um, but questions like this get asked a lot, at least in the classroom. Like, I throw this up, it falls, it hits the ground. So if I say this thing's height above the ground is given by whatever equation after I throw it, when does it hit the ground? We use the height equation because hitting the ground is kind of the end of the process. Um, we've got a few things going on here. We've got subtraction and we've got multiplication. So we should undo the order of operations to solve this. Um, so what should our first step be? Subtract 127 is correct. Um, and I mean, there are actually there are actually a few things you could do. Subtracting 127 is actually is probably the most straightforward. But maybe you want to argue, hold on, our order of operations, I mean, we've got subtraction and we've got multiplication, to undo the subtraction, we ought to be doing addition, right? And if you think that way, and you add 65t to both sides, you can come at this problem from a slightly different direction. We're going to get the same answer no matter what. Our next step over here is going to be to divide by negative 65. Where did our negative signs go? Canceled out. They canceled out. Over here, we're going to divide by positive 65, there were no negative signs to begin with. We get the same T value either way, which is what? I mean, about two hours. I guess if you wanted to plug it into the calculator, you could get a more exact uh, intuition, but about two hours. Two hours would be um, 120 minutes, so a little more than that. Let's see. But we could ask an alternate question, and this is another kind of pain point for students. Um, after an hour, your, let's say your dad calls, and asks, how far away you are? What do 
you would tell what can and that me just to make it very clear sort of what our numbers are after one hour. And our equation is D equals 127 minus 65 T. And the reason I call this a pain point is that it's, you know, a source of a lot of errors that students will see that equation and they'll see that one and they'll understand that the one needs to go somewhere into the equation. But sometimes where substituting values in for D, here we let D be a zero, and other times we're substituting values in for T. And it can be unclear where that one needs to go. And this problem, at least, just needs a little thought. If students in general were willing to jot down explicitly what their variables represented, they would not struggle as much with this as they do. We've got a distance and we've got a time. Is that one? What is it? Is it a distance or is it a time? It's time. It's one hour. So it goes in for T. Here's a nice, uh, nice equation. We don't have to add or subtract or anything like that. We just have to either do this or plug it into our calculator, or let's see, one, two, seven, minus 20 is 100, minus another 40 is 60, 67 minus five. If my mental arithmetic is on point, that ought to be a 62. 62 what? My was. Or again, so you're driving straight home. D equals one two seven minus sixty five T. And you head out at eight a m. And now let's ask a question. Um, your brother lives 45 miles from home. And even though it's not the most realistic thing, we're just imagining we've got this straight line. Here's your starting point. Here's your brother, ooh, why yellow? That was a bad choice. But we've got your starting point, we've got your brother, and then we've got your home. So we're going to think of him as being perfectly 
on the way. And you're going to pick him up on your way to your house. So when will you reach not home? But when will you reach your brother's place? So again, a question like this is really, I mean, to get 90% of the way there. You remind yourself that one of your variables is distance, and the other variable is time. And you don't get confused by that 8 a.m. 8 a.m. is not the number of hours you can stick into the equation. It's just giving some context. But that 45 needs to go into the equation somewhere. So when I stick 45 in, where am I going to put it? What is 45? Is it a distance or a time? It's a distance. Forty-five equals one two seven minus sixty-five t. And now we need to solve this. Um, so we can think of this formally in terms of undoing the order of operations. I mean, the less formal way of thinking about it would be that you want numbers on one side of the equality and variables on the other. So at the moment, you have your time on the right, but you also have that 127. And if you subtract, 127 from both sides, it becomes momentarily sort of awkward. We're going to get the negative number on the left, which, oh, 45 minus 127. I, negative 82. Negative 82, thank you very much. Spared the, the writing out the subtraction. Now we have multiplication we need to get rid of. We can divide both sides to get rid of multiplication. And we get 82 over 65 equals T. So a bit, I, I don't know if we're going to talk, I need to look at sort of the curriculum. If we're going to talk in this class about like converting like 0. 0.7 minutes hours into minutes or stuff like that. Let's for now just get a rough idea. 82 over 65 is about 
about one hour and a fifth of an hour, one hour and some number of minutes. So if you set out at 8 a.m., sometime between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m., So what remains is looking at word problems where your variable appears more than once and you've got to sort of, or rather where more than one variable appear and you've got to kind of work out what to do. Um, so this is going to take more than 10 minutes but let's just look at an example and we'll go into more depth tomorrow. So let's say you're running, well, not tomorrow, you know what I mean. Let's say you're running some event. And you're setting the tickets. and you generate revenue, $1,912 in revenue. And let's say, though most, I think most college events here are free to students, but, Let's say this is a college event and students are buying tickets at $2 per ticket. And that slightly reduced rate because non, no student, let's try that again. Mm -hmm. Because non students are paying three dollars per ticket. And you ask, well, how many, let's say, students, how many students attended? this show. We'll assume that everyone who bought a ticket showed up. And the difficult thing here is that you're being given two pieces of information that are related, but not quite the same. I mean, the number of tickets you sell and the amount of money you make are clearly related concepts. In particular, both of these relate. And I mean, the first thing we need to do here is figure out what our variable ought to be, because we're not explicitly given any variables in this problem. But let's try to think this out. We want to know how many students attended the show, so that's going to have to be a variable. And that's, let's call it S. or student tickets. What? We're going to need another variable, I think. What would be a good candidate for a second variable? N for non-students. N for non-student. Thank you both. I agree. 
Because having these two variables is going to let you write down some equations. For example, well, there are two of them. One of them is probably easier. What's an equation I can write down now that I have N and S? 19 to all your total amount of money. And then do your power two S plus um, three N. Okay. Fantastic. Why are you trying to relate all the money together? Like that's your relation, like the money? Okay. Yeah, that's a fantastic equation. It's not uh, the one I was expecting to get, but you're absolutely correct that it is an equation that we need. Um, but there's another equation we can write down. S plus N equals 812. Exactly. Correct. And there are very sort of fancy or very formal ways we could approach this problem. But the way we're going to approach this problem is as follows. What's the, we're going to ask ourselves, what's the fundamental problem here that's keeping us from solving these equations? And sort of the fundamental problem is that we have two variables instead of one variable. Um, if we had an equation with one variable, we'd be able to solve it. So I'm, I'm not, um, I'll do this problem again on Friday, but kind of rushing through this. Here's the trick. If we know the number of non-student tickets sold, maybe I should have done the other subtraction, but if we know the number of non-student tickets sold, we know the number of student tickets sold, and vice versa. If we know the number of student tickets sold, we can figure out the number of non-student tickets sold. So you can think of there as really only being one variable, because once you know either S or N, you also know the other one. So what we can do in a situation like this is solve for one of the variables in terms of the other, and then plug it into that equation. And I just did the first thing which popped into my head, which was probably the wrong thing to do. It would probably have been more convenient to write n equals 812 minus s. But be that as it may, 1912 equals 2 times 812 minus n plus 3 times n. And I won't try to race through this problem. Well, again, We'll do this tomorrow um, when we can have to actually have time to finish it properly. But the thing we should observe now is that we have an equation of one variable. Our S has gone away and we just have N. And again, this is perfect because N is not what we were asked to figure out. We were asked to figure N. Um, S out. But we remember we can also get to this relationship. So once we figure N out, we'll be able to figure S out too.
All right, and I'll see you Friday. I should have information about the uh,